awesome. say anything Easton Lawrence made this video he was up to about 5 a.m. and he's probably not at the service today because he was up at 5 a.m. but if you see him throughout your week make sure you give him a kudos because he did an awesome job for that um, I'm Jacob for those of you who might not know me I'm the student pastor here and this weekend we're doing something a little bit different because this weekend was D now it's our bridge youth bash this weekend and we had an awesome time Yes? Okay, awesome. I didn't tell them to say that. All right. They, they have no manipulation from me whatsoever except to ask them to wake up earlier and to be here. Some of them just woke up a couple minutes ago, um, but that's okay. So bear with us. I'm, I'm, my voice is hoarse. I'm busy. I'm distracted, but it's going to be an awesome morning, and we're going to talk to you about what Jesus has done this weekend. These are some of our student leaders. Um, this is Lindsay O'Dell. Lindsay, will you tell us what grade you're in? <laughs> this is Lindsay O'Dell. She's on the green mic. Try that back button. <laughs> Here, give her that one. Um, I'm a senior at Taylor. Yeah, you're a senior, and tell us something about yourself that's unique. Um, I play softball. She plays softball, yeah. That one was a curveball. But y'all probably know that. <laughs> She's also going to L.A. this summer, oh. or f in the fall, right? Oh, yeah. I'm oh, going yeah. to attend Loyola Marymount University in L.A., California, Woo. and play softball there, yeah. and be an accountant, hopefully. Cool. All right. This is Luke Vega. Luke, say hi, and tell us your uh, grade and something about yourself. Uh, I'm in 11th grade, and I play soccer. Play soccer? Okay. Awesome. Yeah? <laughs> okay. Yes, he does play soccer. I don't know what that was, but yeah. Hi, my name is Melanie, and I'm in 10th grade, and something about me is uh, I do ceramics. She does ceramics, yep. So my name is Jevin Brocklin, and I'm in 11th grade, and I do basketball. <laughs> I do basketball. All right, you guys can hold on to those however you want. Um, yeah, speaking of basketball, one of my favorite parts was going to the basketball game for D Now. Part of what we did for the weekend was send all of our, like, 120 plus students to the basketball game and Jet was playing in that game so go ahead and give Jet the mic real quick I didn't ask him to do this but tell us what that was like from your perspective as a player seeing all those kids cheer you on they won by the way it was it was really cool because I never seen that kind of support at a game in Taylor in probably like multiple years since our last like playoff team it felt like a playoff environment mm -hmm. and for my first year like being a varsity sport it was it was pretty exciting yeah awesome all right, so I've got a couple questions for them. They heard these questions ahead of time, but I want to promise you I did not tell them what to say. All right, they're going to be answering these from the bottom of their heart, and we're just going to discuss for you guys to see what God has done this weekend. And really, I want the church to see as a whole what he's doing in this student ministry. Uh, I think they would, they would agree with me when I say that this student ministry has changed drastically, but for the better. We've grown we, we've matured, we, we've done more things, we've done new things, and, and I'm excited about what God's done this weekend, but also what he's going to do in the future. I, I was telling them last night, I think this weekend is just the start of something new. So we're going to discuss this. So first couple questions. First one is this. What was the most fun thing that you did this weekend? I'll start. Um, definitely the bumper soccer. I don't know about y'all, but I really... Um, it's fun to hit people in a, in a little soccer ball. <laughs> it is. And it's just, it's just a lot of fun. And then definitely worship. Portraits is amazing, and yep. they've always been amazing, and they really help the youth together, come together, and uh, just serve our Lord. Yeah. 
this uh, my favorite thing this weekend was smashing up the car. Like Ian said, it's it's fun to hit things. The Shout interesting out to Shamika for the putting that on. The interesting thing is you got a new car this weekend. Yeah. I didn't just ruin a surprise for your mom, did I? <laughs> you know no, you no, got I'm a new car this weekend. Okay, you got a new car this yeah. weekend. Okay, so how does it feel seeing that disgusting bashed up car after getting a new car? Good. Yeah. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully that one doesn't look that way, right? Yeah. Yeah. He wrecked that. the other one. That's what I'm trying to get at. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just messing. okay. Mel, what was your favorite part? Uh, my favorite part was the bumper soccer. Lindsay said it was fun hitting people, but I was being hit and I was like on the ground the whole time. Um, but it was really funny, and the game was really fun. It was nice to see everybody there and like. Which game? Oh, the basketball game. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And like having like team spirit for Taylor and all that. And also like staying up late at our host homes and just talking and laughing. It was really nice. Yeah. So to me, the most enjoyable part of the weekend was, I think it's called Jackbox Games. I'm not really sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we played in our host home. And it was like a trivia game where it was a bunch of different mini games. And to me, that was the most fun. And we got into like fun arguments with our friends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they 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 were at my house, the eleventh grade boys, and it was it was a fun time, a unique and mysterious time, but very fun as well. All right, next question is, um, what is something that you enjoy most about our youth group? Wednesday nights, Sunday mornings, whatever. I would say it's a pretty healthy youth group. Um, a lot of people don't get along, but we seem to pretty much all get along. We're all friends. We all hang out outside of church as well, and it's just fun to have that community where you have friends at church, but they're also your friends at school. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my favorite, or um, something I enjoy is all the connections and friendships that we make with each other, because sometimes it's usually people that might not, like, really talk to you mm -hmm. outside of church, but you really grow in the connections with other people. And, like, the same thing for me, like, I think it's really cool how, like, I've grown with people, like, spiritually that I would have, like, literally never talked to if I didn't come to Christ. It's so cool to just share that love and and be in fellowship with your brothers and sisters. And it's just like, I come here as a place to refresh for the weekend. It's really nice. So for our youth group, I really enjoy the reliability. Because even though new people come every week, there's always those same people that are there. So if you ever need someone to talk to, they're there. And you can rely on them. Absolutely. That's awesome. All right. Um, next, um, what is one thing that you learned from either our speaker or your Bible study sessions with your small group leaders, or what's one thing that stood out to you teaching-wise this weekend? Um, so Marquise mentioned that um, God doesn't care what you do. He cares who you are, and that's, like, more apparent in my life because I do a lot of things, and it's just nice to know that even if I didn't do those things, I'm still uh, a child of God, and my identity's in that and not what I do. One thing that I learned was also from Marquise is uh, don't run to the convenient things in your faith because it can be dangerous. That's good. Marquise is our guest speaker, by the way. If they say that name, that's who he is. Um, one thing that I learned from our speaker was, like, it's so important to always ask yourself whenever something new or somebody new comes into your life, like, are they drawing me closer to God or farther away? And, like, are they drawing me to who he wants me to be or who he doesn't want me to be? so important to like eliminate that out of your life and from um my bible study leader avery she went to this place called passion and it's basically like a christian conference during new year's and it's for two days and it's just like a whole like a bunch of people just worshiping god and praising and she said that um one of 
stuff. All right, um, now for something a little bit different. Uh, what's one memory that you think you'll have for the rest of your life, whether, whether it be silly or serious, either one, what's one memory that you can take from this weekend that you're going to remember and look back on as awesome? Um, probably watching the boys demolish each other in the bumper soccer. Um, somebody hit somebody so hard they flew out of the arena and had to jump back in because you couldn't. There was no way to get back in. Yeah. So it was pretty funny. They, they were okay, just just so you know. And okay. several people have knots on their forehead yeah. too because they yeah. clashed heads in it. So I'm pretty yeah. sure a few basketball players might have concussions. So whoops. We checked for concussions. I, I figured somebody was going to say that. We looked at pupils and we have a nurse on. Okay, we're good. Okay. But yes, they, they got crazy with it. It was a lot of fun, though. Luke? Something that will stick with me is there's this one card game at Jacob's house that we play. It's called Secret Hitler. <laughs> and it gets really serious really fast. And it's very, very – It gets pretty argumentative. Argumentative is a in good a word moment, for it. Yeah, in in, in light-spirited fun, but argumentative. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's good. Um, I think that one thing that will stick with me is just staying up, laughing, and just talking about random stuff. Like, it's – I don't know, it's just cool to like just share. For me, it's another thing the speaker said, and it was about how if you keep comparing yourself to other people, you'll never feel fulfilled because someone always has it better than you. But you just need to count your blessings and realize how good you have it in life. Mm -hmm. That's good. All right, last one. They'll be done. You guys are doing such a great job. Last question is this. How have you experienced change and or growth in your relationship with Jesus? Um... I would say I've grown with, like, different youth pastors. Like, we've been through several youth pastors, and um, when Maris was here, I grew in my faith, and then it was just, like, it's ebbs and flows, and now that Jacob's here, our community has grown, and our youth, pa youth group has grown, and everybody's more comfortable with, with each other, and that's helped me tremendously because I feel like I have brothers and sisters in Christ when I've then in the past, I didn't necessarily feel that, but now I do because our community has grown together, and so I'll forever be thankful for that. Thank you for saying so. I appreciate that. Luke? Um, I've grown with uh, my relationship with Jesus because um, sometimes it's really hard to see or feel Jesus, and sometimes you just think he's really far away, but um, like Marquis said this weekend, he's always with you, mm -hmm. and he'll walk with you through anything, and he's not on the other side of whatever you're going through. He's with you. <laughs> what what's a way that you've experienced change or growth in your relationship okay. with Jesus? Um, I've experienced change through, uh, well, me and my best friend Samantha, we're kind of like upfront about everything, especially the gospel or whenever correcting people. And so like the people that we've been around, it's so like nice to see like us correcting them out of love and then, then like we see their heart change and like just God planting that seed in people like as they worship and just all of that, it's, it's like, I don't know, it's cool, like, just to see and actually visualize people's lives being changed in just, like, two days. So for me, my relationship with Jesus grew a lot just by seeing people, like, I'm not, I didn't feel like I was radically changed, but seeing people just changing, or, like, wanting new life in Jesus mm -hmm. just gives me new hope on Christianity and, like, why I, sh why I should keep going in the right direction. All right, can y'all give it up for our students, please? You guys can go that way. Go ahead, take your stool with you, yeah. Oh, man, okay. I'm going to pray for us, and then we'll get into the message. I know you're thinking, is he really going to preach now, too? Yes. All right, Lord Jesus, thank you so much. Um, I am blown away by you this weekend. I'm blown away by these students. I'm blown away by this guest speaker i'm blown away by this band i'm blown away by like the students said the lives that were changed we're going to see here in a few minutes multiple baptisms we had multiple salvations of souls entering your kingdom jesus and i just say thank you thank you for what you're doing in this church thank you for what you're doing in this student ministry lord and i pray that we cause change we build bridges and that this community this city sees what happens here in this church family in this body and we ignite something new and something special for you, Jesus. In your name I pray. Amen. So I will be really quick, I promise. Um, but I learned something this weekend too. Um, and I, I want this not to be heard as me telling you anything that, that
that I know from experience because a lot of times what happens when I speak to adults about students, they'll tell me this. They say, well, you don't have kids yet, Jacob. <laughs> and I say, yeah, you're right. Me and my wife, we're working on it, <laughs> all right? But, but you're right, I don't have kids yet. But, but my response to that is, really, though, I have 100 of them. I have about 100 teenagers that I see at least twice a week, sometimes more. Um, and I've learned from them a lot. And I want you to hear me say that I, I'm not in, in any way condemning anyone, but I want you to see what I see from my position. I asked the students another question this weekend. I polled them on what is one thing that would make your relationship with your parents better? That was a question I asked them. What is one thing that would make your relationship with your parents better? There were some few answers that were like, I wish they'd stop giving me so many chores. <laughs> I wish they'd let me play video games more. There were a few answers like that. But just to be honest with you, complete transparency, the overwhelming answer that I got from students was this. I wish my parents would listen to me more. I wish my parents would spend more time with me. Overwhelming majority. And I want to let you know something that I learned this weekend. I'm going to try not to get emotional. <laughs> I think sometimes as adults, myself included, we see our relationship with students, our kids, our grandkids, the, the, the kids we have at school, if you're teachers or coaches or whatever, we see those students and we see them like this. We're looking at them as if we have binoculars. We see them from a far away Perspective. We see them as like they're they're those kids over there. They're 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 my they're they're my student at school. They're 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 away. They're busy. Our students are so busy, and I know you're busy too, students and leaders and parents. But here's the thing: I want you to see your job. Hear me out on this. Your job, parents, is not to make sure your kids perfect. Your job is not to make sure your kid gets a scholarship. Your job is not to make sure that, that your kid makes all A's. I, I tell them that I want them to make good grades. Your job is not to make sure that they're the best behaved. Their kids, they break my rules. I told kids not to drive, and within an hour, a kid was driving his own car. They're going to break rules, but here's the thing. If we see kids like this, that means we're far away from them. If we see kids with binoculars, that means we're looking at them from a distance. And can I just be honest with you, myself included, because I do it too. Sometimes I stand back there in the sound booth and just watch the students. But let me just be honest. They need you close. They need you close. It doesn't matter what's going on. It doesn't matter what the excuses are. It doesn't matter your work schedule. It doesn't matter anything else that's going on. Your students need you close to them. They're going to push back. <laughs> They're going to get annoyed with you. I know. They get annoyed with me too. But they need you close to them. They want you to be close to them. They may not say it. I promise. A lot of them won't say it. But they need it. Because God created us that way. And, and one of the things that, that I took from this weekend myself personally was there, there was this, this story about Jesus. And I'm not going to get into the story because we don't have enough time. But, but there was multiple stories of Jesus that Marquise shared. And over and over again in these stories, Jesus always talked about his father. He always prayed to his father. And this, this, this phrase kept going around about how Jesus was an image bearer of his father. And I just couldn't get that out of my head. And I, I honestly didn't even plan for this. This was something that, that kind of the spirit brought to me last night. But, but here's what I want you to see as your job, adults, coaches, leaders, parents, grandparents, your job with your students, with your kids, grandkids, whatever, your job is this. Your students need to see Jesus through you. Your students need you to reflect Jesus in their life. 
let me, let me be clear. Let me make, make this clarification. Your students do not need you to be Jesus' parents. You can't be Jesus to them. You can't be perfect. You can't have it all together. And, and if I'm honest with you, if there's something I would encourage you to do is don't act like you can. Be, be honest with your kids about your struggles. Talk with them about their struggles. But, but Jesus, over and over again in the Bible, communicates with God in such a way that he's a reflection of God himself. The verse is this, that just completely stuck out to me. It's John 12, 45. I looked it up. I've got to hold this mirror up because I only have one hand, sorry. But it's John 12, 45. And Jesus says this, And whoever sees me, sees him who sent me. And there's this relationship that Jesus has with his father. And if you read your Bible, if you study it, if you pay attention, the overwhelming sense that we get from scripture is this father-son relationship between God and Jesus. And your job, parents, your job, grandparents, your job, teachers, your job leaders, is not to make sure your kid's good enough. Your job is not necessarily to just correct behavior. Your job is to show them Jesus. Your job is for them to see Jesus through you, for them to see your relationship with your Heavenly Father. That's the most important thing that can happen in your child's life. So here's what I want to tell you this morning, just being honest with you again. I told you I... I got back in the sound booth and I just kind of don't try not to be emotional but I was standing in the back while everything was going on and was trying to catch my breath because I was so busy and I was just watching our students and everything was good nothing nothing went bad there wasn't any awkwardness and I was just watching and to be honest with you I was kind of done I was like man it's the last night I get to go home in a little bit get to rest maybe and the student came up to me crying begging for somebody to talk to him and in my head just being honest with you in my head I was like there's other leaders for you to talk to I'm so busy I'm so tired and in that moment the Holy Spirit prompted me to give him a hug and I gave him a hug. And I listened to him for a long time about his struggles with mental health, about what's going on with his family. And he got saved last night. That's my job. It's not to make sure everything works out logistically. It's not to make sure we're keeping up with the timeline. It's not to make sure that I get everything right. It's to show these students and your kids who Jesus is to me and how much he changes my life. And I promise you, I promise you, if they see that in us, we'll see that in them. Love you guys. Love you, church. Love these students. It's been a phenomenal weekend. I'm going to pray, and we're going to worship, and we'll get out of here. Lord Jesus, thank you again. God, you are doing so much in this church, not just our students, God. We've seen growth in this church, not just numbers, but in relationships and in spiritual growth and maturity and in, in, in people who have tension amongst themselves but work it out. We've seen you, God. We've seen you save souls. We've seen you mend families. God, we've seen you heal the broken. We've seen you take residence in lives of people who's experienced loss, God, and bring peace. We've seen this community served through this church. God, you're here. You're evident. You're working. I want to ask you one thing, Lord Jesus. Will you cause what's happening here to move out of this building and into our homes? Would these
these adults, would these parents, would these teachers at schools, would, would they see these students change? Would these students see these parents and these people's lives change and know that something's different about them? God, it's all for you. It's all because of you and your love, Jesus. 